Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Um, in this final video, we are going to complete our base 2 to base 10 um, conversion program. That's written in Python using tkinter. And we are going to actually write the base 2 to base 10 conversion algorithm, which is going to be a function, and we're going to update the display. So just to really quickly take us through where we've been in this process is if we think about, we start off with this broad kind of process we go through. We start our program, the user enters a base2 value, the entry is processed somehow, we update the display, we clear the entry, and we're done. And then we said, okay, well, now let's get a little bit more detailed here. So let's actually think about some function called process and what happens when the user press enters. When the user press enters, um, the value is, is taken from the entry. Um, then we check to see if it's uh, just a combination of ones and zeros because we can only do a base 2 to base 10 conversion if the entry string is ones and zeros. Um, if that's true, we remove the leading zeros because, again, any of the leftmost zeros that come before the first one are invalid. We did that in our last video. And then we do the conversion and update the display. And so this is what we're going to focus on here today. Now we're going to focus on this base 2 to base 10 conversion and we're going to update the display in both cases. Now, this is not a video on teaching you base 2 to base 10 conversion. I will go through it very quickly for the understanding of the process, but um, I've attached in the comments um, a video that I put together about how to do base 2 to base 10 conversions. So we're going to write this function called base 2 to base 10. And how does this work? Well, before we see that, let me explain to you how, I'll show you mathematically how we do one quick conversion. So, if I'm just going to come up to the top here, let's do a quick conversion in binary from base 10 to base 2. Sorry, base 2 to base 10. Pardon me. So, if I have a number like 0, 1, or 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2, so how we convert that to base 10 is we multiply each value by 2 to the power of, of an incrementing value. So, this would be 2 to the power of 0, this would be 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. So if I wanted to convert this, I'm going to take the rightmost value, so 0 times 2 to the power of 0. And then I'm going to add to that, and then you see the next value is 1. So 1 times 2 to the power of 1. And we see the next value is 0. So 0 times 2 to the power of 2. And our last digit, which is the 1 here, is 1 times 2 to the power of 3. And all I do is add this up, and I'll get the base 10 value. So 1 times 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 1 times 8 plus 0 times 2 to the 2 is 0 times 4 plus 1 times 2 to the 1 is 1 times 2 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 0 is 1. And if I add this all up, I'm going to get 8 plus 2, which gives me 10. So this in total is 10. And again, I this is a whole other set of videos about doing these conversions. But what you notice here is that each time I'm multiplying by 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. So I can use a loop for this. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function called base2 to base10, and we're going to start off by passing str in. We're going to set some value n to 0. I'm going to set total to 0, and then I'm going to set i to the length of the string minus 1. So we're going to start at the last index of the string. And I'm going to take total, and I'm going to add the string at i so that specific index multiplied by 2 to the power of n. So I'm starting, I'm working through the string backwards because I have to start at the, the rightmost position. And then I increment n. A little mistake there. Then I increment i. And then if i is greater than 0, I do it again. So I work all the way across. So let's implement this. And again, depending on your comfort level, you might not understand this logic, but it, but um, 
it takes a little bit more time to really appreciate this algorithm. Really, we're just building this program in this case here. All right, so let's pull this up. So there's my conversion. So I'm going to make some variable called result, and that's going to be base 2 to 10, and we're going to pass it val. And now I have to actually write this function, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say def base 2 to 10, and I'm going to take a string parameter, and there it is. So if we come back to this flowchart, we're just going to implement this flowchart. We're going to make a variable n and a variable total and set them to 0. So n equals 0, total equals 0. And now I'm going to write a loop that's going to go through the string in reverse. So how do I do that? Let's come up here a bit. There we go. I'm going to say for i in range, and I'm going to go from the length of str minus 1, because that's the last string. We're going to go to negative 1, negative 1. So this is a shorthand for just writing a loop to go through a string in reverse in Python. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, and what do I do? Well, I'm going to say total is equal to total plus, and I'm going to take str at i, and I'll have a little mistake here, but we'll explain that in a second, times 2, and the way we do power in Python is we do star star to the power of n, and then we say n equals n plus 1. So this is our loop, and then finally we return total. So what happens here? Oh, we should set n to 0, not 10. So we're going to set n to 0, total to 0, and then I'm going to go through my loop, and this is a loop that's going to go from the last index to 0. And so what do we do? We take the current value of total, and we're going to add the value at str at i times 2 to the power of n, and then we increment that. Now there's a little problem here. To this point, we've been dealing with our entry as a string, and that's fine because we haven't had to do any mathematical operations. But now we're going to have a problem here because when we access this, this is a string, and I can't do mathematical processes to string. So let's actually run this, and we'll see where that error comes up. So let's come down here. Let's get rid of my old one. And we're going to do 5. And so when I put in anything here, I, hit, I get an error. And there it is. And here's my error. Unsupported operand types in, in str. So this means I'm trying to add some string, and it can't do that. So what I do is I cast that string to an int. So now let's run this again. And let's put something in here, 101, press enter. Does it crash? But we don't see anything. So let's come down here, and now let's do something with this total. So if I come up here, back into my process, um, we have done our conversion, put it in results, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say text is, and instead of saying valid input, text is going to be str val, which essentially take the value the user entered, and I'm going to add to it an arrow, and then I'm going to say str results. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original value that the user entered, after it's been processed, so those leftmost zeros removed, and then I'm going to calculate the result, and then I'm going to show it there. So what I should get is I should get the binary value, and then I should get the base 10 value. Let's see if that works. Oh, I forgot a plus there, because I'm concatenating this string with that string. Let's try that again. So if I put 1010, which we know is 10, and I hit enter, there it is. 1010 is 10. What if I put two zeros in 1010? That should be 10 again because these leftmost zeros are invalid. There it is. If I put one, one whole bunch of ones, there it is. If I put one, I get one. If I put zero, I should get zero. One zero should be two. One one should be three. One zero zero should be four. And there it is. We're done. We now have a nice, simple binary or base 2 to base 10 um, converter. 
before I wrap up, I just kind of want to highlight, and I, I really want you to appreciate from this, is what, think about this. We started with these really broad strokes of what we wanted to happen. Um, and we didn't go through the process of imagining the front end, but I said, you know, really, really general. I want to take, take user enters a value, we process that, we update the display, and we clear the entry. And then we got a little bit more detailed here, and so I wrote out this flowchart. And again, a lot of the code for this I didn't know how to do, so if you remember in that first stage, what I did was I actually just commented that in. And then I went through and I did these in stages as I kind of filled in the gaps. And I really want to highlight that importance of thinking broadly and then narrowing it step by step. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful day.